So low calorie sweeteners are consumed worldwide, but I think it's uh, fair to say that they are currently distrusted by some consumers, health professionals, and policy makers alike. So in that context, I think it's clearly important to know about the effects of low calorie sweeteners, know about their effects on human physiology, health, and behavior. Now that's a vast undertaking, uh, which we can't complete in the two hours we have uh, available here. However, I think we can give you an up-to-date summary of four central aspects uh, of this subject. And those aspects are the safety of low-calorie sweetness, our attraction to sweetness, and it's the implication of that attraction to sweetness for low-calorie sweetener consumption, the glycemic response to low-calorie sweetness, and to start with the effects of low calorie sweetener consumption on energy intake and body weight. Now where available, we will be drawing on systematic reviews and meta-analyses, which are regarded as I guess we all know, the goal as a gold standard for evaluating research on diet and health. And which are used by national and international uh, bodies such as the World Health Organization for developing dietary guidelines. We have four presentations, um, each lasting approximately 20 minutes, and each followed by time, hopefully, for uh, specific questions. And then at the end uh, of those um, four talks, we have scheduled 15 minutes for a panel discussion and, and further questions. So without taking up more of your time with um, the introductions, um, I'm going to uh, kick off, start with my presentation, the aim of which is to review the evidence on the potential of low-calorie sweeteners to reduce energy intake um, and overweight and obesity. Uh, although before um, I start um, fully with that, I should show you my disclosures, which are on this slide. So in short, I've received funding from industry to support and speak about research on low-calorie sweeteners and sugar. Now, theoretically at least, replacing some of the sugar uh, in the diet with low-calorie sweeteners ought to reduce overall energy intake. And this is because there is no precise meal-to-meal -meal balancing of energy intake against energy expenditure. Indeed, there's not really that energy balancing even over the longer term. So the dilution of energy density achieved with low calorie sweets shouldn't be completely compensated for. <coughs> At least that's the expectation. And indeed, that appears to be the case. I'll show you some evidence for that later on. Having said that, the role of low calorie sweeteners in weight management is controversial. Uh, with claims of benefit or harm being based on often selected citation of studies. And that's what uh, motivated us to set out some two and a half years ago now to review systematically all of the relevant ev evidence on this um, subject. And indeed that was a, a, a massive uh, uh, effort. Took up a lot of my time and a lot of uh, 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 the co-authors uh, time on uh, that review. My aim here is to summarize uh, the results of that review with particular reference to the key claims that have been made about low-calorie uh, sweetness. So this is the schematic uh, for this review. Uh, I apologize if you can't see uh, the fine details. That's not really the particularly necessary, but we set out to review, as I say, the entirety of the relevant evidence for this, and that included animal studies, and I'm going to start describing uh, those uh, animal studies. The first type of um, uh, uh, those studies, we divided the animal studies really into two categories, and the first type 
included many studies testing the safety of low calorie sweets. And in those studies, uh, animals, um, rats or mice, depending on the particular study, were often consume large amounts of low calorie um, sweets. And there were also other studies in that group which were looking at the effects of sugar on um, energy intake and body weight, where low calorie sweeteners were used as a, a control condition. As you can see, what we found from those studies, summarizing a lot of evidence very briefly, what we, was found for those studies is that a majority either showed decreased weight when low calorie sweeteners consumed, or no effect on weight compared with a control condition, or a few uh, showed increased weight. And in general, the studies that showed increased weight were where low calorie sweeteners appear to improve the palatability of the animal's uh, diet, rather bland um, uh, lab diet. There is a second group of studies, however, where a different consensus was found. And these are a, a conceptually distinct group of studies where rats were intermittently exposed to uh, low calorie sweeteners, in particular saccharin in most of the studies. And that group of studies found a pretty consistent effect where the low calorie sweetener consumption was associated with increased uh, body weight. And I'm going to take a little bit of time to describe uh, um, that research, which was done by, primarily by one group of uh, researchers, uh, Susan Swithers um, and, and colleagues, uh, originally from Purdue University in the USA. Now, in these studies, rats have unlimited access. They have full access all the time to their normal laboratory uh, diet, chow diet, which is slightly sweet tasting. And then in the experiment itself, uh, itself, the rats are given a supplement food. And that supplement is, is yogurt in most of the studies. And on three days a week, that yogurt is fed in its um, plain form, so unsweetened. And then on three other days of the week, it's uh, fed sweetened. So one group of rats gets um, yogurt sweetened with saccharin, and another group of rats gets uh, the yogurt sweetened with uh, glucose. And the underlying argument about this procedure is that in the case of glucose, the sweetness predicts an increase in the energy density of that food, that supplement food. Whereas that's not the case uh, for the saccharin sweetened uh, yogurt. And what I should say is the rats mostly eat all of the yogurt that's um, offered to them. What's found, and you can see from um, the graph on the left hand side, what's found is over time, the rats tend to eat more energy overall if they were exposed to the saccharine containing yogurt and they gain more uh, body weight. And that result has been a key result which has been used to argue that exposure to low calorie sweeteners disrupts the learned control of energy intake, disrupts uh, an important control on, on appetite. And it's received a lot of attention and is one of the challenges uh, 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 concerning low calorie sweeteners. That in fact they may be doing more harm than good in this case. Now more recently, this procedure has been looked at and replicated very carefully by another group of researchers uh, from uh, University of Sydney in Australia. Uh, this group was led by uh, Bob Boats and, and colleagues. So they've replicated the studies and, um, and also extended them in um, some rather elegant ways. And what we have here is two graphs. The original um, on the left hand side from Swithers and colleagues, a summary of um, their, um, some of their studies where they show higher body weight on saccharin. Boats and colleagues find exactly the opposite result. Now, you might ask, how can that possibly be uh, the case? Well, um, Bob Bokes and colleagues have looked at this really forensically closely, I would say. And what they found, what they think 
uh, explains the difference between their results and Swithers et al. is that in the Swithers et al. studies, the researchers excluded rats from the saccharine group that showed a low preference for the saccharine yogurt. Now that seems quite a reasonable thing to do, but unfortunately it seems that preference for saccharine sweetened yogurt predicts how fast the rat is likely to grow in the future. So by effectively what they did, by removing rats with low preference, they limited rats that were relatively slow growing. So they biased their sample of rats to fast growing rats, and that's why they see the result they do. The much more plausible result is uh, Boxetel's result, which shows that the glucose-fed rats tend to be heavier after a number of weeks, and that's almost certainly because they fail to completely compensate for the increased energy density um, of the, the, the food that they're, they're offered. So I think this analysis is very important indeed because this has been a strong uh, challenge, as I say, to um, low-calorie sweeteners. I think we may have some understanding now which su suggests that this particular idea the disruption of the learned control of uh, appetite um, by low calorie sweetness is certainly no longer supported by, by uh, these rat data. So effectively, um, the, the original results were an artifact of the method. Okay, so I'm going to move on from that now to talk exclusively about human studies. The first group of human studies we um, looked at were then uh, there are observational uh, studies, prospective cohort studies, and in those studies, uh, what we're, what's um, examined is the relationship between the change in low calorie sweetener consumption over time with the change in body mass index, index or weight over, over time. What was found? From those studies, and we included here only studies with over 500 uh, uh, participants, so there's some very large uh, studies here. What was found overall was that there was uh, almost zero association over across all these studies between weight change uh, and, and uh, change in low calorie sweetener consumption. Although the largest studies um, in, in adults certainly showed a small advantage. Uh, for low calorie uh, sweeteners, uh, whereas some studies show the opposite effect, and particularly the study right at the top uh, shows a different result, and that one is often cited, very uh, frequently cited by critics of low calorie sweeteners. But when you look at the totality of evidence here, the, there's really no relationship for these studies. Of course, the problem with these studies, even with um, fairly sophisticated um, statistical approaches, it's still not possible to separate cause and effect. So it's quite plausible still that what we're seeing here is a mixture of two effects. That actually obesity is causing low calorie sweetener use, or possibly that low calorie sweetener use is, is uh, adding to obesity. We, we just don't know from, from these sorts of studies. Potentially there are other confounds uh, in these analyses that can't be completely um, uh, eliminated. So this is really not very strong evidence one way uh, or the other. And of course we all know this gold standard um, for discerning cause and effect are randomised controlled trials. And we found a number of relevant um, randomised controlled trials um, in, our, in our search of the literature. The first type and we, we divided those into two categories, again. The first category being what we call short-term um, studies. And those short-term studies looked at the effect of exposure to low-calorie sweeteners on um, short-term energy intake. And they used what is known in the field as the preload test meal uh, method. So in this method, if I'm a subject in the, um, the study, I turn up at the lab at the designated time, and in this case I'm given this blackcurrant drink to consume, uh, which is sweetened with a low calorie sweetener, so it contains virtually zero uh, calories. I'm obliged to consume the whole of the drink, 
And then sometime later, actually, let's say in this particular study, 30 minutes later, I'm um, offered uh, lunch, and I'm offered um, uh, an array of foods in excess of uh, what I can, um, I would normally eat uh, at, at such a meal. So I'm served in this case 1,500 calories, and I'm invited to eat until I feel satisfied, until I feel comfortably full. And I do that, and in this illustration, I show you that I eat 900 uh, calories, and so in total, I've eaten. Um, with a drink, um, exactly 900 calories, not all of the, the food that was offered. On another time, uh, typically the same day the next week, I go through the procedure again, but this time I'm given a sugar-containing drink to consume. And that drink, as far as we, in most studies, is made to taste and look as closely like the low-calorie sweet drink as, as possible. I consume that drink, and you can see what I've illustrated here is that here I consume, on this occasion, 825 calories uh, from the meal. So I consume slightly less. But overall, when I add calories in from the, the drink, um, I'm still consuming more than I did on the day that I consumed the low-calorie sweetener drink. So there's partial but not full compensation for the, um, at lunchtime for the drink consumed half an hour earlier. In these studies, I can also look at the effect of water. I can look at, I can compare the effect of consuming a sweet drink with zero calories and water, uh, obviously with zero calories. And here, the result I've shown is that uh, lunchtime intake and total calorie intake is, is the same after those two for those two drinks. <coughs> Now here are the real results, and actually there are many studies in this field. I know you won't be able to see the details. There were studies um, that actually done over the last um, 30 some years that are, uh, um, are relevant to this, this question. And we summarise them here. The overall um, conclusion from this is there is about 50% compensation um, for um, sugar consumed um, in, in, in the drink. A slightly more compensation in children than adults, although that wasn't um, a statistically significant uh, difference. Now these results, I think, are important in two respects. The first is that it's simply not the case that liquid calories, or this, in this case, uh, sugar calories in a drink are somehow missed by the body, as, as, as some people will argue. They do engage appetite control systems, they do create some satiety, because they do suppress um, appetite, and over many studies, very reliably um, uh, so. However, that suppression of appetite, that satiety effect is not sufficient uh, to fully compensate the calories consumed in that drink. So overall, there is a reduction in calorie intake with a low calorie sweetener uh, drink is consumed in place of a uh, sugar-containing drink. And so I would say that looks promising uh, for low-calorie uh, sweetness. And here we've summarized um, uh, those results. So if you look at the top of the graph, you can see the summary uh, effect sizes for adults and, and, and children, for low-calorie sweeteners versus um, sugar a reduction in overall energy intake. When we look at low calorie sweeteners versus water uh, drinks, and that's circled in, in red there, we see no difference in overall energy intake. This is quite an important finding in itself, I think, because there have been arguments that um, exposure to the sweetness of a drink might increase appetite. There's no evidence for that being the case here. Now, having said all this, it looks promising, but really what we want to know about is the effects of longer term exposure to low calorie sweeteners. The effects on energy intake of repeated exposure and the, the effects on, on body weight. And here are the results of uh, the studies that we included in our natural analysis. We were highly inclusive of, of, of studies. 
Again, this is the first of these studies was done over 30 um, uh, years ago. And what you can see here is overall a clear result in favour of consumption of low calorie sweeteners versus sugar in terms of a reduction in um, body weight. And that's true for adults, which are the studies at the top, and one study in children, uh, which is at the bottom. Although that study in, ch in children is probably the best uh, study of its type. It had the largest um, uh, sample size. And its effect, actually, I think perhaps rather remarkably, is, is, is almost identical to the overall effect size for the adult studies. So clear evidence here in, in favour of reduced relative weight when low calorie sweeteners are consumed compared with sugar. And there were also three studies, three relevant studies, comparing consumption of low calorie sweeteners uh, versus water. So uh, perhaps what I haven't made clear, and um, I hope it's obvious, that there re these are all randomized control uh, trials. And this result surprises uh, somewhat. Here, the result is that low calorie sweeteners are causing a reduction in relative weight compared with um, water. Now, why might that be? Well, one possibility is that consumption of the low calorie sweetener drink actually, and that it's usually drinks in these studies, actually satisfies our desire for sweet taste. So we may be less inclined to eat um, sweet food in the meal or, or um, consume a, 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 a later consume another sugar containing a sugar containing drink. And we do have some direct evidence from that. So um, uh, this is a, uh, the results of a study that we're currently writing up for publication. What this study shows is that consumption of a low calorie sweetener drink, in this case diet co uh, cola, causes a selective reduction in sweet food intake in a meal. So in this case, the cola drink is consumed with the meal. Sweet food intake is reduced in that meal compared with when water is consumed in the meal. Savory food intake is not affected uh, by the sweet drink. <coughs> so that looks promising. And here is actually further supportive evidence for that. So this is from one of the long-term um, uh, randomized controlled trials of which compared water with um, um, low calorie sweetener uh, drinks. And again, the analysis of the, the dietary data from that study indicates that participants randomized to the diet beverages, the low calorie sweetener beverages, ate less desserts in, in the study compared uh, with the participants randomized to water. So here we have evidence again that actually low calorie, exposure to low calorie sweetener uh, drinks um, is probably satisfying rather than increasing desire uh, for um, sweet foods, at least in the, within the meal. So what about other um, um, reviews? What, what have other um, researchers uh, concluded? Well, before we published our review, uh, Miller and Perez published a review of some of the same studies as us, and um, they came to a very similar conclusion. They didn't look at animal studies, and they didn't look at the short-term studies in, in humans. They looked at observational studies and the long-term studies, and they came to a similar conclusion. However, very recently, another meta-analysis has been reported by Azad and colleagues, and here their conclusion is the RCT data do not support the intended benefits of non, uh, low calorie sweeteners, non nutritive sweeteners, they call them. Now, how can they come to different conclusions when actually they have the same uh, studies available as us and Miller and Perez? Well, it seems that it depends on their. Uh, selection criteria for studies. So here, here's the relevant table from, from their uh, review. What they did was only accept studies if they were longer than six months in duration, 
um, adults were included in, in the study. So they didn't look, they um, excluded the trial, the very large trial, on, on children. They also included in this study, in, sorry, in this analysis, um, studies that compared water with um, uh, low calorie sweetener drinks, and even two studies that compared low calorie sweeteners in capsules with placebo capsules, um, in this case the uh, uh, stevia, which actually was a study looking at high, uh, effects of um, low calorie sweeteners in relation to hypertension. So clearly that's not relevant to how we normally consume um, uh, low calorie sweeteners, nor are any of these studies except one relevant to the question of low calorie sweeteners replacing sugar in the diet. So I don't think um, uh, this, the, con the conclusion from this study uh, actually follows. I think the intended effect of those calorie sweeteners on weight management is uh, a reduction in weight when low calorie sweeteners replace uh, sugar in the diet. That's not what these um, studies are about. So I've, I've summarized that in this um, uh, uh, slide here. I should mention there's just one study here, one new study, uh, that uh, was published after um, our, our review. It compares the consumption of low calorie sweeteners with water and actually finds an opposite result to the one um, of the other three studies uh, we included. This perhaps is a special case. Uh, I, it, it clearly, if we had included it, would have reduced that effect of, of, of uh, low calorie sweeteners versus of water. It is a rather special set of circumstances, though, because in this particular study, participants um, consume low, uh, low calorie sweetener drink uh, five days a week, immediately or soon after uh, the lunchtime meal. So, quite an unusual consumption uh, uh, occasion. So, perhaps in that situation, there's no opportunity for the low calorie sweetener drink to reduce desire uh, for, for sweet food later in the day. But why that procedure should actually uh, reduce the rate of weight loss on a low calorie diet, which is, which is actually what it did compared with water, is, is very unclear to me. And, um, it seems unclear actually also to the authors, they don't come up with a mechanistic explanation for that. But we, we, we need to ex accept these data uh, and try and understand um, what's going on. So here, overall, are my uh, conclusions. I would stand by uh, our conclusions from our, our review in, in 2016. If, if anything, I'm more confident in these co uh, conclusions now that we understand uh, that the results of animal studies challenging, the uh, intermittent exposure studies that challenge um, the intended effects of, of low calorie sweeteners are actually based on, on, on flawed methodology. And the human studies are, are, are pretty clear, especially the studies comparing low calorie sweeteners uh, with 